In this video, we are going to dive in to explore some of the tools that data scientists use. But before we do that, we want to first take a look at the history of data science. Defining data science has a complicated history, and to understand why, we first need to return to a viral Venn diagram. Yes, you heard that correctly, a viral Venn diagram. In 2013, a data scientist named Drew Conway was trying to define data science. When I, when I first arrived in New York, I kind of inserted myself into what was then this, again, kind of nascent community of folks in academia and industry and uh, startups who were doing this work. Um, and so eventually there formed a kind of I don't know, almost working group of folks who every month we would meet for a potluck brunch at the top of the New York Times building in the R&D floor, which is all the way at the top of the New York Times building, and just sit around on a Sunday morning and kind of talk about what this data science thing was. So that's the story of his creation, but it doesn't quite capture the ensuing debate. Again, this was back in, you know, 2009, 2010, we were having these these morning conversations and, you know, sometimes mo they're mostly just for fun. I mean, we were all friends. We knew each other from, from various walks of life and we would just come together and chat. And so, you know, one, one day we were having this conversation around, you know, what is data science? Like, how would we think about defining it? What are the requirements to be a good one? And we had this wonderful conversation, uh, you know, Chris Wiggins and, and Hillary Mason were, were, were kind of leading the, the chat. Uh, and, and I kind of walked away from that, um, that discussion with a whole bunch of ideas in my head as to, you know, well, okay, this is, this is what these guys think. And, and, and here's how I might interpret this. Um, and so, the following week, uh, this is when I was still in graduate school. So uh, on one particular class, I sat all the way in the back of the lecture hall and just opened up my laptop and started kind of thinking about how I would define data science based on the ideas that, that had been discussed at this potluck breakfast, um, which ultimately led me to, you know, firing up my, you know, open source GIMP illustrator and creating what is now the data science Venn diagram. And I went uh, and then ultimately wrote a blog post about it that um, went as viral as a data science post could go viral in, you know, circa 2010. The, the, the central part of the debate, I think that, that, that we were having back in 2010, and, and honestly, it seems like many folks are still having, although, it, you know, it's shattered into many more dimensions now, is, you know, what are the constituent pieces that some person should have if they want to actually be uh, a data scientist? And so, you know, I broke this into three big groups. One is you have to be competent in using and developing software, um, what I refer to as hacking skills. And what I really meant by that is, you know, this is not someone who's a professional software engineer. Hacking skills means someone who is, you know, able to fire up the command line, can manipulate text, knows how to work with a scripting language so that they can produce repeatable, maybe shareable and reproducible pieces of code that could be used to analyze data. You know, again, there, there wasn't a sense of professional application. It was just, you know, do you know some stuff? Can you actually code, uh, code enough to, to be able to build kind of an MVP of something? The other piece of it was kind of the academic side. So if you're going to be building these things, you should have some real kind of grounding in the statistics and the mathematics that go into the models and the methods that you're using, right? If you don't have that, um, then you may then you may simply be kind of pointing a very powerful technical weapon at data and, and not actually know what's going on. And then the third piece, which I think ultimately becomes kind of the 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 glue that brings it all together is what I call the substantive expertise or, or really kind of subject matter expertise. Um, and this has nothing to do with your skills as a coder or your competency as a statistician, but more, do you know how to ask good questions, right? Because at the end of the day, um, and again, thinking about this back in 2010, Ultimately, what I real what I was observing out in the in the kind of intellectual marketplace, so to speak, is that there tended to be a lot of people or, or most people were good at coding and, and a lot of people had or could get training in statistics and math, but they didn't really know how to ask good questions. And, and if you don't have a kind of 
point of view on a problem or point of view on a data set, then you kind of starting with nothing because no matter how much data analysis you do, if you're asking the wrong questions, you're kind of just, you know, treading water. Um, and so we combined all three of those to, to create data science. And of course there's the, the kind of uh, secondary overlaps that occur between all of them. And that's the data science Venn diagram. You can see several different professions with several different types of expertise can come together in order to achieve a very specific purpose, to take data and find the information within it. Now, the data science Venn diagram has often been imitated, but never replicated. The eclectic and overlapping expertise of data scientists has often meant an eclectic and overlapping set of tools have been used. In order to look at the tools that have been used, let's first look at changes in popularity of programming languages over time. And here we have ourselves a horse race. And C Sharp is way out in front. We've got Java in second. C Sharp is running away with this race though. We have PHP and Java going after first and second and third, second and third, and JavaScript is trying to make a push here. We are looking now at Java and PHP. Oh, Java overtakes C Sharp. Oh, C Sharp's not giving up yet. Oh, JavaScript's coming. JavaScript and Java now battling for one, two. JavaScript and Java battling. We've got C Sharp fading to fourth. We've got Python in fifth now. Python is coming up a little bit strong later in the race. We're over halfway through the race now, folks. We've got Java and JavaScript battling back and forth. Java and JavaScript, JavaScript light and fast, JavaScript is pushing hard. Python overtakes PHP and Python overtakes Java, now Python is coming late in the race, folks. This is exciting, Python and JavaScript, one, two, and Python is our winner. But there was one entry late into the race, folks, that we did not even see coming. Who was it? Who was our ghost entry? Never bet against Excel. Now, Excel does several things very, very well. But one of the things Excel does not do well is reproducible data analysis. One of the things commonly talked about in Drew's interview was that data science needs to be reproducible. You need to have a script, a set of instructions that you can follow reproducibly to produce reports and analyses from them. So when we're thinking about our own data science tools and taking the first step in our data science journey, we need to think about which tools will allow us to be reproducible. Now at this point in your journey, you have two options. One option is going to be to use the programming language R. In the R video, I will tell you all about this programming language. However, in the Python video, you can dive into this programming language. Of course, we saw that Python won the horse race. It's a very powerful and versatile programming language for data science. So at this point in your own journey, you can choose your own adventure.